everybody. Um, and uh, I am not Pastor Barth, obviously. Um, he is uh, at home quarantining from COVID. He uh, picked that up on Friday. That Omicron is really spreading. Uh, but he's doing fine. Uh, so we'll continue to pray for him and his speedy recovery and getting back to health. Actually, it's, um, it's, it's gone through a lot of them. And the backup uh, who was going to be here was Matt Cahill. He was going to preach for us. And uh, he was exposed to somebody who had COVID. He doesn't, didn't get himself COVID, but because of the exposure, uh, the guidelines are to, of course, uh, self-quarantine and stay away from large groups. And so I'm the third string, uh, which, uh, you know, it's not saying much, but um, fortunately, I don't have to do the sermon today. Uh, we have John Horn who's going to uh, uh, provide the message for us uh, today. So that, that'll be uh, something to hopefully look forward to. Uh, we celebrate the first Sunday after Epiphany, uh, baptism of our Lord. Um, I want to call your attention to the theme above the opening song there, and that is our mission statement. Uh, create an engaging community who loves the Lord Jesus and serves him. It's just uh, a lot a lot shorter, more concise, but really has a lot of the same effect and, and movement that we want um, as we go forward from this visioning process um, and the sermon today will be about, okay, what are our next step? What is, what is our uh, mandate uh, to do to, to uh, serve the Lord Jesus and to promote his gospel around the world and also here in this community? So uh, let's go ahead and if you don't mind standing, and we'll, we'll go to the uh, opening liturgy, <clears throat> which is the Matins on page 208 in the front of your blue <clears throat> hymnal. Page 208. The Matins, the Order of Matins. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my, and my mouth, mouth will declare, declare your, praise. your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. <clears throat> Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to move down to the um, venite. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us, let us make, make joyful, joyful noise to the, the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Let, let us make a joyful noise to him with songs, songs of praise. praise. For, For the, the Lord, Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places on earth, earth are in his hand. hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. We read the uh, collect of the day. Uh, please pray. Have, Father in heaven, 
As at the baptism in the Jordan River, you once proclaimed Jesus, your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized in his name may faithfully keep the covenant into which they have been called, boldly confess their Savior, and with him be heirs of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, we continue on with the peace wave and greeting of peace. So wave to those, or as, as you're able or comfortable, to greet one another. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We sing the song, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Before we do this sermon, we're going to read the gospel lesson so we can read that together. So if you would turn to page 1594. 
Luke 3, 15 to, and remember, I'm reading this, we're reading through the first part of verse 23. We're ending at ministry. We're not going to go through and read the entire genealogy. That would just be torture um, today. Um, it's good to have, but there's a lot of words in there and names. So anyway, so Luke uh, chapter 3, verse 15 to uh, 23a. So you can read with me. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. Thank you. Oh, we're stopping there at 23A. So, okay. So it was an interesting week to learn on Thursday that Pastor Barth had fallen ill and taken to the hospital. Uh, but rest assured, Matt Cahill was going to be doing the sermon. So all was good. Um, and then Friday afternoon, I'm waiting in line at Kaiser getting my COVID booster, and Marlene has an urgent text for me saying, call, um, and the news was about Matt Cahill that he was not able to preach because of the COVID exposure. And she said, I'm checking with Bart. He's trying to find, Pastor Bart Lowe's trying to find someone to preach, um, but I will call you at 8 o'clock if can't find anyone. So 8 o'clock comes, and there's the call that, no, Bart was unable or had not gotten back. Um, so turns out that my dad did the service this morning and the sermon, and I'm doing it today. But the good thing is that Pastor Barth had written the sermon, or he had written half of the sermon. <laughs> so when I came down yesterday to see Marlene, um, she gave me Pastor's half-written notes or half-typed-out sermon um, and his notes, which, if you know pastors, they have very unique ways of doing sermons, and pastors is no different, and trying to decipher everything was a lot of fun. Fortunately, this was a topic that I've been spending um, pretty much the last year on in terms of the vision, so it wasn't like we were doing, as John said earlier to me, it wasn't like this was a sermon on Revelation or something, so um, <laughs> quite good. So yes, today we are going to be continuing our month of blessing, and today we focus on the mission statement or mission mandate. Uh, the vision is surrounded and developed from the four sides of the window frame, and I don't know if all of you know that, but there is a frame that we looked at as we were going through this process, and on one side of the frame you have the mission statement, you have on the other the values, which we're going to be learning about next week. Uh, the measures by which we gauge the vision, and finally, our strategy. So before we get into the sermon, I just want to say that we are blessed to have gone through this process, and it was uh, you know, encouraging that the congregation, uh, you know, back in December of 2020, made a unanimous vote to go through the process of identifying a vision for the church. And it's nice to have this because... 
as we enter 2022 and as we enter the next decade of our Redeemer Lutheran Church, we actually have a guiding process as to where we're going to go. We're not just here kind of haphazardly going through things, but we actually have a guiding process. And today's message is to break down this mission statement, the parts of it, and what does it actually mean? What are we actually saying we are going to be doing as a church? So the first part of this is what is and why do we need a mission statement? You know, most places have mission statements, but why does a church need one? Well, a mission statement or a mandate is to be a clear and concise statement that defines what we as the church of Jesus Christ is ultimately to be doing. It is question zero. What are we doing? It points us true north. It guides the mission. It becomes the heartbeat of the church. It is the guiding compass, the ultimate direction which points us forward. And we can see an example of this in the mission that God gave to Moses. At the burning bush, we see God giving Moses a mission. God wants Moses to be his point leader in the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt to the land of promise. Moses, in essence, receives a compass. Look at what God had in store for the Israelites. And we read from Deuteronomy 8, 7 to 10. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And here we see that God himself provided living language that illustrated and anticipated his better future for Israel. God not only gave Moses a compass, but a travel brochure as well. And this is what a mission statement provides. It is a golden thread that weaves through every activity we do in mission work as a church. It is a leadership statement that directs and integrates all of our thinking, speaking, and doing. It is a leadership statement and not a marketing statement. It is a statement of who we are. It defines our direction. It directs our energy and integrates our activities into one simple statement, to create an engaging community that loves the Lord Jesus and serves him. So in this sermon, we're going to be breaking down the three parts of the mission statement, starting with create an engaging community. So what does that mean when we talk about create an engaging community? Well, this is one of the first exercises that we went through as a vision team. This was back probably in, we started in March, so this is probably April. Um, the team was divided into two groups to work on the mission statement. And it was a Jesus moment when one group was reminded by a member about the pictures in the narthex from Pastor Johnson, the founding pastor of ORLC. And that's the picture right there. This is the gate that we're referencing. So thank you, Allison, for putting that up. Pastor Johnson gave these to the congregation, to our Redeemer, during our 50th anniversary celebration in 2007. And the picture shows the white gate that opened onto the property. The white gate was open to Pastor Johnson and his family for this ministry to begin. And it is that gate that now leads to this church and the community and the world around us. Pastor Johnson wrote, through the Lord's blessing of opening this gate for us, our Redeemer Lutheran Church was founded. One could call that gate the white wooden gate to heaven. I think Pastor actually asked, it would have been cool if we had kept that gate, you know, had it around here somewhere. Uh, this Jesus moment of remembering the gate stirred our hearts and spirits. The gate metaphor of opening the gate to people for us to engage with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This has led our ministry for all these many years from developing the preschool to creating a food pantry to having family ministry and establishing ESL classes. This leads us to the word engage. 
to be an engaging community with the people in Winneka, California, the greater San Fernando Valley, and with the missions we support around the world. This compelling journey has taken the people of this church on a trip. We have not chosen God's mission. He has chosen it for us, his mission for us and the purpose here in this place. The impetus for this mission is not our greatness. The impetus is Jesus Christ. He invites us to be his missional church in this place, engaging the community with the gospel message. He invites us to go through the white wooden gate to engage. We engage externally to the community and internally to the church. He invites and we follow. So the second part of our statement is loves the Lord Jesus. Jesus' command to his disciples and to us in John 15, 12 is to love one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And isn't it amazing that the Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, professes his love for us? How are we deserving of his love? We are not deserving of his love through our actions, but Jesus loves us as his children, so much so that he died on a cross to bring us salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 our love for the Lord Jesus Christ comes from what he did for us. Away in the manger has the beautiful profession of this love we have to have for Jesus. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Our love for Jesus is the driver of everything that we do, everything that we do in this church. We love Jesus for loving us. We love Jesus for the sacrifice he endured for us. We love Jesus for the gift of salvation that he paid for us through his death and resurrection. The verse in the song, Knowing You, provides the best summary of our love for Jesus. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord. And then the last part of our mission statement is serving, serves him. So our service to Jesus is not to win his favor, but to thank him for what he has done for us. Serving Jesus is our way to show his love for us to others. It's our faith in action. And here are some Bible verses on serving that I wanna share. 1 John 4, 9 to 11. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And from 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And from 1 Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And from James 2, 14 to 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action, is dead. So our service is motivated by his love for us. When we serve, we are showing the love for Jesus that we have in our heart. And this is powerful. We can show Jesus' love for us by serving others. It inspires us. It brings us to serve in joy rather than out of a sense of obedience and that God will not love me if I do not serve him. No. Jesus' love for us is complete. Our love for him is by what he has done for us. This is our motivation to serve. And we need to remember this when we are called to serve. We are to be joyful in service, not serving begrudgingly. Why do I have to do this? But serving in joy 
I am happy to be serving today. When you are asked or feel compelled to serve, take time to pray to the Lord for a heart that is filled with gladness. Ask God to give you the right attitude so that you can reflect the love he has for others through your service. Look upon the acts of service as opportunities to bring Jesus' love into the world. Attitude is important, and we look to serve with joy and gladness in our heart. So our mission mandate, our new mission for the church, is what we've been doing all along. It's just very succinct now and puts it into a dynamic way of pointing our church forward. To create an engaging community that loves the Lord Jesus and serves him. You will hear this mission many times as you continue to be in our Redeemer Lutheran Church, because this is what our church is all about, to create an engaging community that loves the Lord Jesus and serves him. And everything that we do in the church will be measured by this mission statement. I envision a time when we will see this on the wall somewhere here, and I envision how we are each going to be held accountable to both how the church is meeting the mission and how each one of us are placing that mission into daily practice. And I look forward to this time and look forward to the growth that we have. So we move forth with our new mission and look to put it into practice in all that we do. May the Lord grant us the ability to carry forth on what he has in store for our Redeemer Lutheran Church in the years ahead. May we engage others, reflect the love that Jesus has for us in our love and service to him. And just as a quick end note here, next Sunday, um, we're pleased to have with us both uh, Dominic Rifkin, who's with the Pacific Southwest District and was with us um, through our vision statement. Uh, he will be doing the service, uh, the sermon, and also have a, question, uh, a presentation between the two services. So I encourage you to be here. He's going to be talking about the values portion of our uh, uh, vision process. And also next week, we want, we're going to acknowledge um, Stella Yao, who was the, uh, or who is with Link SoCal, and she was our facilitator through the entire process. So we look forward to having her with us in worship next Sunday as well. So thank you, Jesus bless you, and have a good day. Thank you, John, for uh, that wonderful message and really inspiring. Um, we uh, continue with our offering of our tithes and gifts to the Lord Jesus.
Before we begin with the prayers, um, I just want to call your attention to the, your bulletin in the back, the Faith and Fellowship. It has a number of uh, people to pray for. Uh, we are going to pray for some of these people, but there's quite an extensive list here. And so I encourage you to take it home, uh, include it in your nightly prayers or whenever you do uh, pray throughout the week. Um, Lord, hears our prayers. If you don't mind standing, please, for the prayers. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and, and first of all, we want to praise you. We uh, have so much to be thankful for, so much to uh, appreciate in our lives, the beautiful weather, um, our health, our happiness, the, all the joys that we get from family, from friends. Lord God, we just want to always remember how blessed we are in living in this country and how blessed we are to be a part of, of your holy body of believers. This week, uh, we want to raise up Pastor Barth as he uh, quarantines from COVID. Lord, continue to help him heal, recover well, and bring him back to health, 100% uh, health in the near future. Lord, we also want to pray uh, for uh, the Wenzel family, specifically for Steve Wenzel as he was admitted to Northridge Hospital um, for some various health issues. Lord, we want uh, to, to keep him in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We also want to raise up to you um, David uh, Schwebs, who's um, had a surgery. He's in Wisconsin, and we want to pray for uh, his healing. He is the father of Barry Schweb, who attends this service. Lord, we also want to pray a, a, a prayer of uh, healing and peace to all those who we will be praying for throughout the week, those who have health concerns with flus, colds, with COVID, with other, with other concerns. Lord, we, you are the great healer, and we know we can trust in you to have our best interests at heart and to do what is right in your, according to your will in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord, uh, lastly, we want to raise up this congregation and the vision uh, process. Lord, thank you for the leadership team, the vision team who has committed countless hours to uh, developing a mission for this congregation, Lord. It's up to us to enact it and to enable it. Um, as you say, as you call us, let us listen to that call and heed the call. May we rejoice and, and accept the callings of volunteer work and other such work with, with joy and gladness in our hearts as we get to share your presence, your peace, and just Jesus with others around in our community and throughout the world. 
Lord, we pray this, uh, that you would continue to bless this congregation as we go forward, uh, continue to bless the leadership, pastors, lay leadership, and volunteers who will be enacting these, these uh, processes in, in the future. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, if you don't mind, let's turn to the responsive prayer on page 270 in the front of your hymnal, and we'll continue on with prayers. Page 270. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have, have mercy, mercy and hear us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I cry to you for help, O Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness. O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, Praise his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave. And crowns me with love and compassion. Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come before you. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Okay, we're going to turn the page, please. <clears throat> Top of 272. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls, all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord Almighty, order our days and our deeds in this peace. Amen. All right. Before we uh, sing the closing hymn, we have a few announcements that I need to look at my notes here. Um, let's see. I, I think John already mentioned the main one next week. We'll have Pastor Dominic Rivkin, um, who is a Pacific Southwest District um, pastor, and he will uh, present on our vision. And also there'll be a presentation, so I want to encourage you to the 11 o'clock folks to come early, come about 9.40 uh, to come for that presentation and hear about what's going on in the church and where, where we're heading. What are we doing next, you know, now that we have this awesome mission statement. Um, so that will be next Sunday. It'll be in the parish hall between the services. So hopefully you guys can come early for that one. And if, you're at the, if you go to the 8 o'clock, 30 service to stay for that. And let me see if there's any other announcements. Oh, thank you. There is a winter retreat. Let me get it here. There it is. At uh, St. Andrew's Abbey, uh, February 25th through 27th. So uh, Reverend Ken uh, Fries, 
uh, is the speaker, Frazee. And uh, if you are interested, you can contact Cliff Horn. He's in the directory. Um, if you have any uh, questions um, or would like to register. And uh, the, there's a number there as well to look up more information. And I think that's it. Okay, we'll sing the closing song. Lift high the cross. Before we go, um, one, one other thing. We wanted to do this last week, but um, I'm going to blame Pastor because he forgot. Um, every year we recognize our, our wonderful singers, as of course my mom tells me almost every month I have no singing voice. And, and uh, so we are, we are always blessed and thankful to have four uh, wonderful singers. And Beth is up here. So Beth, uh, let's give a hand for Beth as one of our singers. They, volunteers, so this is for you. Enjoy. You can get something because Santa didn't get you. Um, and then I have uh, Jackie, Larry, and Lima Horn also. They, they're usually the ones up in front leading us in, in song, and that's, it's a wonderful thing to have, and we appreciate their volunteers throughout the whole year to do that. And, of course, we also thank the band, but they're paid. So it's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> thank you. Man. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it. Uh, and as, as Pastor says at the end of each service, what does he say? Um, have a good week. And Jesus bless you. Amen. Amen. You are my strength.